Hi, welcome along to a video podcast on astrophysics. We're going to be exploring what we mean by astrophysics and delving into the physics of these two images. On the left, we've got the Andromeda galaxy, and on the right, we've got the Hubble date field. So we'll start by having a detailed look at the Andromeda galaxy and zoom in a bit to this picture and see what that tells us. You're thinking, John, you missed the galaxy. And I did, but I did it on purpose because stars are a very important part of astrophysics. Uh, these stars are all local. And um, what I mean by that is not that they're kind of close like the chemists down the road or anything like that, but they're close in that they are part of our own galaxy. And we'll talk more about the important distinction there. You can see the stars are varying in brightness and they're varying in color. And one of the questions of astrophysics is why is that the case? It looks like the stars in the picture are varying in size, but that's uh, actually a kind of an optical illusion. The brighter stars occupy more pixels simply because they've got more light. They're actually all so far away that they're sim simply points. Many of those stars, if we zoomed in or could zoom in, would be binary stars. They're two stars orbiting each other. So another question for astrophysics is how do we know about binary stars? How do we know that they're there if we can't see that there are two separate stars? We now believe that many of these stars will have planets orbiting them. Uh, and again, those planets are too small to see. How on earth do we know that there are planets orbiting those stars? Right, so here's a little bit more of a detailed zoom into the actual galaxy itself. We've known about galaxies uh, in terms of what they look like in the sky um, for a good long time. People were drawing them um, in the 19th century. But it's only comparatively recently that we realised just how significant these things are, because um, for a long time we just thought they maybe there was something within our galaxy, a similar distance away from the stars, but just a kind of a bigger and a different thing. But um, Edwin Hubble managed to use a telescope, and I guess part of the astrophysics is to um, find out about telescopes, the important instru instruments that mean we can see these details, and also to find out about the CCD chips um, the, like the one in your phone in the camera that record um, record the light so that we can make measurements and create these fantastic images. So Edwin, Edwin Hubble was able to identify very bright individual stars in this galaxy and because he uh, devised a means for knowing how bright these stars are he was able to work out how far the galaxy is away. We've got about 2.25 million light years which is close for another galaxy but it's much much further away uh, than every other star that we'd made a measurement to. And so kind of overnight, he massively expanded um, the size of the universe, how big we believed the universe was, um, as we realised that all these smudges of light um, were outside our galaxy and much, much further away than we'd previously thought. Right, so here's the Hubble Deep Field, a massively important image in the history of um, astrophysics and possibly you know, kind of in the history, history of humanity. Um, the Hubble Space Telescope um, was pointed in one direction for um, 26 hours um, over a period of time and the images were kind of assembled. And the direction was chosen simply because they wanted to try and take a picture looking outside our galaxy. So if you can see, um, there are just a few bright dots in there. They kind of got a little cross on them. And I believe there are four <coughs> nearby stars in this image inside our galaxy. Everything else in the picture is outside our galaxy. So let's zoom in and take a bit of a closer look. So if we take that area there and expand it, you can see that we're not looking at stars. They're smudges. They've got um, some significant size. Um, and a, a lot of PhDs, a lot of research has been done on this um, image. And we now believe that um, there are many, many galaxies in this image. Each one of those kind of smudges is a, a, an independent galaxy. We're looking back to with about um, a billion years after the Big Bang. We're looking as far across the universe as we believe it's possible. We're not limited by the technology here. We're limited by looking back to the point where there were things to look at and when the universe um, was transparent. So an, another kind of mind-bending feature of this is of course that if we're looking at something that's 10 billion um, light years away and I believe that there are objects that are at least that far away in this image, um, of course we're looking back in time aren't we? We're looking um, right back to the beginning of the universe and quite possibly none of the um, features in this um, image exist in the way, exist in the form 
that they look now because they've had so much time to change since then. Right, we're going to zoom back out now, go back to the entire image. And it's kind of, when we consider it in the, the whole image it's in, in its entirety, we start to really get a feel for its significance. Um, there are about 1,000 galaxies, possibly as many as 3,000 galaxies um, in this picture. A galaxy is a collection of stars. A, a galaxy probably typically has 100 billion stars in it. Um, the, the Andromeda galaxy we were looking at earlier has a simply mind-numbing um, thousand billion stars within it. And to me, that begs a really important question. So we look out in the night sky, we've chosen the direction, we've taken a picture, um, nothing special about that direction. And within that picture, we've seen um, thousands of galaxies and each galaxy is of the order 100 billion stars. So we're getting a feel now for just how much kind of stuff there is in the universe. But how much of the sky are we looking at in that image? Are we looking at, you know, a really big chunk, you know, like uh, maybe behind your hand held at arm length, or maybe it's a kind of wide field image. You know, we're looking at, you know, like the whole night sky in one go to get that many galaxies in. Well, this is the um, standard interpretation of the area of sky we're looking at. It's so improbable, I genuinely had to check the maths. Um, what we were looking at with the Hubble Deep Field image is we're looking at an area of sky that would be covered by a 5p piece if it was 20 metres away. I've heard that another way of expressing the same thing is that if you held a grain of sand at arm's length, um, the Hubble Deep Field is the area behind that grain of sand. So let's try and put all that together. Behind our 5p piece, 20 metres away, there are of the order a thousand galaxies. And each of those galaxies contain something around 100 billion stars. So that means that in that tiny area of sky, there is something like 100,000 billion stars. But that picture only represents when 24 million of the entire night sky, and there was nothing important about that direction. Uh, and I, for one, can say, that certainly makes my head hurt. 